This video is the introduction to estimating a population proportion topic. Let's consider the following example. Among 238 cell phone owners, 18 through 24, surveyed by the Pew Research Center, 102 said that their phone was an Android phone. So what proportion of surveyed individuals owned an Android phone? How do we find proportion? So to find proportion, of the individuals that owned an Android phone in that sample, by the way, sample proportion we denote by p hat, right? We have to take the number of individuals that have an Android phone and divide by the total number of individuals in that sample. So we obtain that proportion of surveyed individuals that own an Android phone is 43%. So once again, 43% represents sample proportion. But here's the question. Can we say that, well, if in that sample 43% owned an Android phone, then nationwide 43% would own an Android phone? Well, no, we cannot, because each sample proportion will be slightly different. So sample proportion will vary from sample to sample, right? Um, it may be different from population proportion. But can we use sample proportion to get some idea about population proportion? Well, we can. Um, we can use sample proportion to estimate the population proportion. And because of that, sample proportion is also called point estimate. And now this is how it's done. We will never know what population proportion is unless we survey each individual in the population. However, we're going to be able to provide an interval, like a range, um, as well as certain measure of likelihood that that interval includes the unknown population proportion. And that measure of likelihood we call level of confidence. And this is how we're going to think about it. Our guess will be based on the sample proportion, p hat. And then using that sample proportion, we're going to construct as an, an interval, as we said. And then wider that interval, then more confident that we're going to be that the true population proportion is in that interval. And then smaller the interval is, then less confident we can be that population proportion is in that interval. But how do we find that interval? Well, here's the formula. We're going to start with sample proportion, and then we're going to subtract a certain number, a certain quantity, and then add that same quantity. That's how we'll obtain the interval. Now, what is that quantity that we're going to be adding and subtracting? Well, its formula is written right here, and it's in front of you. And you should be able to recognize some parts of that formula. So you should recognize Z. Well, it has some subscript next to it, but we'll, we'll talk about that subscript later. But the fact that we have Z involved, it means that we're going to be basing our calculations on the normal probability distribution. Well, because we know the distribution of the sample proportion is approximately normal under certain conditions. Now, letter alpha that we can see here is within the subscript of z that will represent the level of confidence we're going to talk about that in a minute and then you might be able to recognize this expression it represents the standard error or standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample proportion with the only difference is that here we're using sample proportion and not population proportion since well we don't know it right now, overall, this quantity is called margin of error. So this whole expression is called margin of error. And then z itself is called critical z value. And then we already know that p had its a sample proportion, but another name for it is the point estimate. Let's talk about level of confidence now. It's denoted by the Greek letter alpha, and this is what it represents. So if I say that the level of confidence is 95% or 95% level of con confidence, that means if I obtain a lot of different samples, and in each sample I find sample proportion, and then based on that sample proportion I construct an interval that I would hope that contains um, the unknown population proportion. Well, then with 95% level of confidence, I know I will know that 95% of those intervals, then I'll know that 95% of those intervals will indeed contain the known population proportion. Now, this is how confidence interval is written in words, but what is the corresponding alpha value? But well, the corresponding alpha value for a 95% level of confidence, it's actually 0 0.05. How do I get that number? Well, I, we have to do two simple steps. 
So first we need to change percentage to decimal. And then we have to subtract the decimal from 1. So this is how we're going to obtain the value of alpha. And once again, this means that if 100 confidence intervals are constructed, each based on a different sample, then we will expect 95 of the intervals to include the true population proportion.